Now that we have our email input filled, we're going to want to create a similar component, except this time for the entry of a password. A lot of this component is going to be the same as our previously created composable, the email input field. Because of these similarities, we're going to copy and paste the previously created email input file, renaming this to password input. We'll need to rename the name of the composable to password input, along with the preview. We're also going to rename the email argument to password, updating this in each of the corresponding references. We'll do the same for the on email changed callback, changing this to on password changed. We're going to need a slightly different label for our input field, which will need to be added to our string resources file. We'll name this label password and give it the value of password. We'll then update the reference for this in the label text composable and then change the leading icon to lock. This indicates that the field is a password as opposed to the previous email icon. If we refresh our preview, we'll now be able to see the updated UI. We're just going to change the password value in the preview so it's a bit more indicative of a password. And we can see that this now looks more like a password field as opposed to an email input field. When it comes to password fields, it's quite common for the actual password itself to be not clear from view. For these scenarios, the text field contains a visual transformation property that can be used to provide a class that can provide a transformation to the input content. Compose comes with a password transformation out of the box in the form of a password visual transformation class, which can be provided for the visual transformation property. This will mask the input content, and as we can see in the preview, it's now not visible what password has been entered into the field. One common thing in password input fields is the ability to toggle between these two visible states. We're going to implement this for our password input composable, but to do so, we're going to need some form of state that allows our composable to know how the password field should be composed. We'll add a piece of mutable state to our composable called is password hidden, followed by wrapping this in a remember so that the value is persisted across recompositions. With this state in place, we can now utilize this to compose our UI. Here, we're going to tweak our visual transformation declaration. Now, we're only going to use a password visual transformation if the password hidden field is true. Otherwise, we're going to use the visual transformation none value. This means that the password will be visible when this state is set to true. Next, we're going to utilize the trailing icon of the text field composable. This will act as a button that allows the user to toggle between the visible and invisible states. We'll start by composing a new icon whose content will depend on the current state of the is password hidden field. We'll start by composing a new icon. We don't need to provide a content description here because it's not necessary. We can see now in our preview that this visibility icon is being displayed. However, we're actually going to want to compose this icon based on the flag of the is password hidden state. When the password is being hidden, we want to show an icon that indicates the visibility is disabled, while on the other hand, we want to indicate that the password is currently visible. We're going to switch this out so that if the password is hidden, we use the visibility icon. Otherwise, we're going to use the visibility off icon. This means that now, as the is password hidden state changes, the icon will change with it, indicating to the user what action will be triggered. So that this icon is interactable by the user, we're going to want to enable click events. We can use the clickable modifier for this, toggling the is password hidden state so that when the icon is clicked, this state is flipped the opposite value. However, at this point, the icon isn't very accessible. Click event that is in place has no form of description, meaning that accessibility services will not be aware of the purpose of this component. What we'll do here is utilize the onclick label of the clickable modifier so that we can provide a description based on the current is password hidden state. We'll need to start here by adding two new string resources to our resources file. We'll add a content description for showing the password and a content description for hiding the password. With these in place, we can now apply a label to our click modifier. We'll utilize a string resource composable function here to provide a string resource based on the current value of our state. With this description applied, we now have a completed icon composable that can be slotted into the trailing icon block of our text field. We can see here that if we switch the value of this state to true, we can see how the toggle changes the state of the password input as well as the icon. Now that our password input is complete, we can go ahead and compose it within our UI. Before we do go ahead and do this, we need to make sure there is access to both a password and on password change callback. So we need to first add these arguments to our authentication form composable, similar to how we have done for the email input. We can then compose this password input, passing in the corresponding password and on password change callback. We'll then want to hop over to our authentication content composable and do the same there. You can see here how we haven't satisfied these arguments yet. So for the password, we're going to need to want to pass in the password property from our authentication state reference, and then we need to implement the on password change callback. Here, we'll trigger the handle event function, 
triggering the password change event and passing in the password that is provided to this function. Hopping back over to our authentication form composable, we can update the preview to see a visual representation of our changes. You can see here how this doesn't look quite right, and this proves the importance of having previews for our composables. We're going to start here by using a modifier to fill the maximum width for the password input field. We can see now how this uses the maximum width for the card. And then we're going to create some visual space because this is very cramped right now. We use a spacer composable using the modifier to fix the height of 16dp, which creates sufficient space between these two input fields.